Hello everyone and welcome to my review of the strategy game Age of Wonders 3. This should be my second video and I hope you all enjoy it. Age of Wonders 3 is the fourth entry in the Age of Wonders series, with the last game having been released about a decade ago. Made by Dutch developer Triumph Studios, Age of Wonders 3 is a Sid Meier's-like strategy game fused with successful RPG gameplay in a high fantasy setting, an ambitious goal and one not attempted by many developers. While Age of Wonders accomplishes its goals in many areas, there are a few problems as well. We're going to start things off right away by getting into the session options. There are several small scenarios to choose from, as well as two bigger campaign style scenarios. While the writing can be a little iffy in some places, it's pretty solid and interesting most of the time. Without spoiling anything, I'll just say you've got your usual shadowy bad guys and scary empires. The options you can choose from when you start a random map are a bit more varied than the scenario options. After you choose random map, you can then move on to changing your difficulty, map size, how many players there are, the game speed. Then you can move into advanced options, change the amount of ocean in the game or the amount of mountains. Uh, then after that, you can then move into leader customization. The leader customization is really well done. There is a preset list of leaders of different races and classes, but I always prefer to make my own leader. While the character creator here is pretty bare bones, the fact that it's even in a strategy game is a welcoming sight. Here you can create your leader. You can choose your race, class, gender, and look. You've got your standard fantasy races and classes including humans, orcs, elves, dwarves, wizards, paladins, warriors, and rogues. I've changed the names a little, but those are the basic ideas. There are also some interesting ones like Dreadnought, which prefer technology over magic. You can then choose some interesting specializations which alter your character spells in-game, which I can get to later. Your race and class both give you access to different units and buildings. Most of the time your race plays a larger role than your class, but your empire can expand to other races, but your leader can't change class. Your class gives you access to different research, which is a tech tree, that can offer some major bonuses. Picking Warlord will give you access to spells that destroy land and units, but picking Archdruid might give you spells to heal and create forests. Casting spells requires mana, which you gain every turn from cities and buildings. The class you choose for your leader affects your research and cannot change, but throughout the game other heroes will come to join you. These extra heroes might have a few spells of their own, and will cost plenty of coin, but they don't affect research. All heroes can die except for your leader, so make sure to guard them with a big army. If your leader dies, he'll be resurrected at your throne city, or your capital city. If you lose this throne city, you've just taken a major blow, but you can build a new throne in another city. However, if you lose your leader and your throne city on the same turn, it's game over. City management is pretty good. You can make buildings and units in your cities, and when a city's border reaches a tile improvement, they receive bonuses. These improvements are things like mana wells, gold mines, and taverns. Unlike civilization, these improvements are automatic. You don't need a worker to build on them. Your throne city is the race of your leader, and any cities you make with settlers from that city will also be the same race. However, if you take a foreign city through either war, quests, or money, then you can choose to keep the city that race. So towards mid-game, you can start making armies that consist of the strongest units from all the races that you've taken over. The world map itself is pretty well done and can be massive. There are tons of independent units traveling the world, so it never seems empty. Sometimes they'll attack your weakest cities, but usually they just guard resources on the map. The terrain can be pretty varied too, with arctic wastelands, volcanic goblin infested mountains, typical fantasy forests, oceans. There's also a ton of things for your heroes and armies to fight for experience. There are quests you can do, bosses to kill, and ruins to explore. Many of these will give your heroes rare items with magical properties. In addition to the main map, there is also an equally large underground map that you can enter from certain openings in the ground. This underground area can be scarce of resources, but it's a good place to set up hidden cities and start hidden ambushes. There are also many independent units and cities down there. Some races like goblins and orcs can even start with cities down there. Combat is pretty well done too. When armies meet, they enter a turn-based, tiled combat map. There are melee units for the front lines, many different kinds of ranged units, magic users, even cavalry. You've got a lot of choices here. Any given unit can move a distance and attack. If your archers move a single tile, they can probably attack three times. But if they move as far as they can possibly go, then they're only going to be able to attack one time. There are some destructible things on the map as well, but that mechanic is mainly for attacking cities, destroying walls and gates. I like the combat and I do enjoy the variety of different units, 
but it can get a little boring sometimes. In mid-game, I often find myself auto-resolving most battles. Right now, diplomacy is a complete mess. The other factions will decide if they love or hate you on first meeting, and getting them to change their opinion is almost impossible. The options in the diplomacy screen are pretty bare bones. You can trade resources, make alliances, open borders, declare war, things like that. The AI will completely ignore your borders. They'll ignore you if you turn on your allies and capture all their cities. They'll ignore you if you declare war on everyone you meet. The only thing they care about is your alignment, which is affected by certain choices. But you can still be pure good and be a warmonger. It's far too easy to maintain alliances because as soon as you ally with someone, they'll just completely ignore you for the rest of the game until either you win or you defeat them. Diplomacy is a glaring issue in an otherwise well-designed 4x strategy game. Alright, it's now time to give Age of Wonders 3 a final score. Age of Wonders 3 attempts to combine the best aspects of strategy games and RPGs, and while some features such as diplomacy are a bit of a mess, most other mechanics are very well done. Combat has a few weak points that can sometimes get repetitive, but gathering loot for your heroes, having armies meet, and capturing cities is always fun. The cities themselves are pretty easy to manage with many building and race options, but it can be too easy to have all your cities exactly the same. The world map is fun to explore with your heroes, just as if you were playing an RPG. The game does a good job of making the world seem alive and interesting. While hero management itself can be pretty simple, they do a good job of giving you many options for them. The game's weakest point, diplomacy, is a major downside though. I suppose it doesn't ruin the game completely, but in a strategy game, having something like diplomacy not working properly is really unfortunate. After all this, I feel Age of Wonders 3 is deserving of the final score, 7 out of 10. While combat gets a little boring during some games, the variety of units and the size of some battles stops the game from falling to a 6. Disappointing diplomacy, however, really holds it back from getting another point or two. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed my video. If you liked it and you want to see more, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Also, if you like this review, go ahead and give me a like, it's a huge help. If you agree or disagree with my score, go ahead and say so in the comments below. I'll see you all next time.